Well, for more on the rise of do-it-yourself investing, we welcome Mitchell Goldberg. He's president of Client First Strategy and joins us live from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, Mitchell, we're seeing these DIY investing apps and they're getting more popular. What are some of the benefits you're seeing? There are a lot of benefits to all kinds of do-it-yourself investing applications. Um, it depends on how involved you want to be. Are you the type of, inv of investor who would like to set it and forget it? Or are you the type of investor who wants to be very involved with the active management of your investments? The, the popular ones that are on the tip of everybody's tongue now, uh, as you know, are the robo-advisors. And there are firms that are spending billions of dollars to capture a greater share of the investor's investable account. Um, because as the, as the technology develops, it makes it cheaper and cheaper for these firms to operate, and they pass a point where they no longer need seed money to operate. So when they capture more assets, they make more money, and it's just as more people become investors globally, I think the trend in do-it-yourself investing will also continue to grow globally as well. Now, Mitchell, if someone is a new investor and they see all this buzz, they might jump in without really knowing what they're getting into. What are some of the potential pitfalls do you think could arise for new investors? Well, first of all, for a new investor, I, you, for me as a professional, I always want to counsel to them whether if they use a financial professional or if they work on their own. They have to know three important things. One is their risk tolerance. Number two are their goals. And number three, okay, is their time horizon. But the risk tolerance is the most difficult thing to assess, and that's where the greatest pitfalls of do-it-yourself investing come into play. So for any new investor, even any experienced investor, they have to understand, we all have to understand that part of the investment process is realizing and accepting that you're going to make mistakes along the way. But there are strategies that professional investors use, which I am happy to share with you and your audience, um, so that many do-it-yourself investors watching this may have the potential to do a little bit better on their own. And if you don't mind, I'd like to just name a couple of those, okay? Number one is a disciplined strategy. And you need that, it's very important, so when you have a tough week in the market, like the one that just ended, um, you don't want to be reacting to the whims of the market ups and downs. What you want to do is you want to have your account set up in advance using what I like to, to use, our limit orders for buying and selling. And the other thing you need to know is what your, your goals are. Okay, because as, as we get older, we have different goals. So it's important for a pitfall to avoid is having just overconfidence. And that's what I mean by having a simple strategy using limit orders. For example, if somebody's going to buy a particular stock, instead of buying, let's say they're going to buy 100 shares today, instead of buying 100 shares at right now, maybe they'll buy 30 or 40 shares today at the market, and they'll use a limit order to average down on dips of 3 or 4% or 8 to 10%. Now, this Mitchell, way we, they we, have we are going to have to, I'm sorry, we are actually going to have to move on only because, you know, we want to make sure that our, okay. our viewers get the most out of this. Um, now, technology has created a lot of these tools to invest, and it can be hard, as you were saying, to decide which strategy works best for you, especially if you're still developing one. How do people determine what the best strategy is personally for them when they see stock markets tumbling and they start to panic? I think the best strategy that people have to pick in, among the technology offerings, and there are many, there are um, funds of funds, there are uh, target date funds, there are the robo-advisors. I think it's important that people are just going to have to maybe try a few of them, maybe use a few simultaneously, and pick the ones that work best for them. There's no one-size-fits-all. That's the problem. So people want this solution that says, hey, I'm just going to go with the robo-advisor, or I'm just going to go with the... Um, you know, the fund of funds approach, the target date approach, but these don't necessarily work for everybody. So my recommendation is to try a few of them and the one that makes it easiest for you to stick around in a tough market that gives you the ability to not work off of emotions of fear and greed, I think that's the best one that you have to find out. Uh, you're just going to have to find out eventually which one is the best for you. And Mitchell, as we wrap up quickly here, final word, the worst mistake that you see investors make. Beg your pardon? The worst mistake that you see investors make? Lack of diversification. There's really two. Lack of diversification. Uh, when people think to diversify, they might own five or ten stocks. But if they're all in, the, all in the same sector, if they own eight technology stocks and two healthcare stocks, they're not diversified. They need to own energy. They need to own financial services. They need to own healthcare, technology, 
there's utilities, there's lots of different sectors to go to. So I see the biggest problem is people just aren't diversified enough. Well, thank you very much. Mitchell Goldberg, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to leave it there.